I'm about to describe what is probably the most common problem players have when studying poker. They'll sit down and spend a few hours studying solutions or practicing drills only for that knowledge to feel lost in game shortly after. For example, they might feel really good after a study session homing in on 3-bet pots, but feel completely lost when they're playing almost an identical 3-bet pot a day or two later. It's almost like they're put on a different planet when it comes to actually applying their knowledge in-game. If you've had this issue, this video is exactly for you. What I'm describing isn't a phenomenon that is unique to poker. It's the result of how the human brain fundamentally remembers and recalls information. But here's the flip side. With the help of cognitive science, we can learn a few concepts that will help you understand how to study poker much faster than your competition. If you're a serious poker player, I recommend sticking to the end. Let's start our path towards this goal by explaining what happens in your brain when you study poker. And then we'll address the problem that prevents you from applying the information you feel like you've learned. The most simplified accepted model of memory works something like this. When you're studying something like a solution to a drill or a poker range, you start by holding that information in your working memory. This is basically your brain's mental sketchpad. It's where you temporarily hold information that you're actively thinking about, but it only lasts for a few seconds unless you do something with it. If the information is going to stick, it needs to get encoded into short-term memory. And this only happens when you actively process that information. It happens when you're asking yourself, what hands are betting here? What hands are checking? And why? Now, the big thing with encoding is that it tends to be stronger when you interact with the information in a meaningful way. Sometimes taking your time and studying slowly and deliberately can actually be much more efficient in the long term. And we'll talk a bit more about this later, but a highly effective way to learn most subjects, according to science, is to jump around a bit between related topics so that everything feels slightly new and slightly different. Unlike studying the same thing repeatedly, this forces you to engage with the information a bit more meaningfully because it's new, leading to stronger encoding to short-term memory. Short-term memory is basically your brain's temporary storage system. If you've ever studied a spot and feel the sense of understanding, that's because the information is active and accessible in short-term memory. It can hold on to things for a few minutes, sometimes even hours, but typically not much longer than that. It's really important to understand that short-term memory feels like it's going to last for far longer than it really is. Especially in poker, this can lead to what feels like a trap. Think about it this way. After a long study session, most of the knowledge that you learned is sitting in your short-term memory. It feels like you really know the information, but when you come back the next day and sit down to play, suddenly the information is nowhere to be found, even in almost identical spots to the ones you've studied. And that's not a failing on your part. It's not because you didn't study hard enough or because you're not smart enough. It's because a lot of what you learned never fully transferred into long-term memory. It stayed in the short-term memory long enough to make you feel confident, but it never became stable enough to be available when you needed days or weeks later. And this brings me to the first key point. For you to learn something long-term and be able to actually use it in-game consistently, you need to revisit the information in order to signal to your brain that it's actually worth keeping. Most poker players don't do this part. They'll either study a spot very in-depth, but only once or twice before moving on to the next one, or their routine simply won't have enough repetition baked in. For example, many players only study by reviewing the biggest hands that they've recently played. But if you only ever study by reviewing your biggest three bet pots from time to time, you're not actually going to retain most of the information that you learn because these spots don't come up often enough. You could be the smartest guy in the world, but unless you really put in the reps and deliberately revisit the information, you're bound to lose a lot of the knowledge for next time. You're gonna keep some of it, but you will lose ground to somebody who's actually deliberate with how they approach studying. So then naturally the question becomes, how often should you revisit the information that you're learning? Because on one hand, it's very clear that studying one small topic at a time and then never coming back to it is suboptimal. But on the other hand, it's also clear that constantly repeating old information is also suboptimal. Because if you're always repeating something that you previously learned, then you're never learning anything new. So there's a very delicate balance here. You want to revisit information enough to signal to your brain that it's worth keeping, but not so often that it's the only thing you do when you sit down to study. I've personally been on both ends of the curve before, so I can tell you from my personal experience just how suboptimal either of these two options feel. But what's even more interesting is that there's another added benefit to being in this optimal zone of studying. Research shows that revisiting information at the right point in time strengthens learning beyond the simple fact of repeating it. When retrieval is slightly challenging, your memory gets reinforced harder 
leading to bigger gains compared to people who study in a less structured way. Learning happens the most when you give yourself enough time to slightly forget the information. In other words, if you wait so long that you completely forget everything, then you're basically relearning it from scratch, and obviously that's not good. But if you forget it just a little bit, where it feels slightly hard to recall, that's where the biggest learning happens. The difficulty is literally your brain getting a stronger signal that this information is worth keeping. Now, the exact perfect balance is going to be different from person to person. But the beauty of it is that if you can find where this right balance is for you, then you can actually outstudy somebody who's putting in more hours and might even be more intelligent than you because you are working smarter than they are. But believe it or not, there's another way that you can optimize your study even further. And this has to do with another broken way that people usually learn poker. When players study a few drills, look at a few solutions, or review a few hands, they'll usually focus on very surface level details and review those spots in isolation. They'll do things like check if they played their hand correctly according to the solver, or they'll look at the full solution, but they'll only look at just that one. While this can feel very good in the moment, it doesn't actually contribute to that much learning. Because in poker, memorizing surface level details in isolation does not get you very far. That's because it's extremely unlikely that you'll ever encounter the exact same poker spot twice. You want to study for the way you want to play. And by studying spots in isolation, you're only learning how to play those spots in isolation. Poker is about making sense of unique spots that you've never been in before. So optimal learning has to focus on building predictive models for how to play in new spots. You want to be able to predict how the solver is going to play in slightly different situations, or if exploits will work in slightly different types of spots. And this connects directly to how our brains are naturally wired to learn. Learning how individual hands play can definitely feel good, but it's only one isolated piece of information. Instead, cognitive science indicates that our brains learn best through patterns, sometimes called schemas. When we learn something, we retain it best when we can connect it to other things that we've already learned. Not identical spots, but similar ones. You can think of it like this. You can get really good at memorizing one spot in isolation, or you can build a giant mental web that gives you huge predictive power for brand new situations. At a very high level, when we study poker, we're trying to make sense of why the solver is doing what it's doing and what kinds of exploits could work. And in order to make sense of that information, we look for patterns or strategic concepts. A concept could be something like the difference between in position and out of position play for a spot. Or it could be something like the preferred bet size for different hand classes. The beauty of poker is that it's complex enough to be interesting with a huge skill ceiling, but it's still small enough that you can actually make sense of all of these patterns and learn the game in a very deep way. Even though there are a lot of concepts to learn, the game of poker is not out of reach for anybody. And once you get better at the game and start to intuitively understand these patterns, you'll notice that most new spots are basically just a blend of a handful of concepts interacting with each other. For example, looking at a spot, sometimes concept A will matter a bit more, sometimes concept B will matter a bit more, and sometimes concept C. But it's always going to be a blend of a lot of different factors, and you have to know how those factors interact. And that's another reason why studying spots in isolation really doesn't make sense. If you only learn one spot at a time, for instance by doing the occasional hand review, then you don't really develop a feel for how these different patterns interact. But when you study and compare a wide range of related spots, and you focus on the right underlying patterns, then you start to get a feel for which patterns more important where, which helps you build this massive predictive web in your head. And once you have that web, you're able to accurately predict how to play in entirely new situations, ones that are very different from what you've encountered before. And learning by focusing on patterns also makes new learning easier because you're never learning new points from scratch. They're always fitting into a much larger mental model. And getting this right feels amazing. At some point, everything just clicks. Theory and exploits just start to make sense. It's like you become fluent in poker and you can find yourself in an entirely new spot, confident in how to play, without ever having studied it before. Some people get to that point in a few months, while others will not get there after five or even six years. The range of possibility from high success to total failure is just as big in poker as it is in any other field. People who work harder and are more intelligent are going to have a higher chance of success, but none of that comes even close to doing things smart. We all know the archetype of the intelligent, hardworking person who simply cannot seem to get ahead. Working smarter is the answer. At Savant, we just launched a massive new feature that we firmly believe helps you do exactly that. It's called our practice hub, and the whole point of it is simple. 
Based on the science we've discussed, it helps you build long-term memory through structured conceptual practice. The Practice Hub lets you build a custom deck out of drills bundled in drills packs. Then it uses spaced repetition to bring back the information at the exact right time. It lets the correct amount of forgetting settle in, specifically tailored to you. And like with all Savant content, all of the drills, including the brand new packs that we've created, have detailed explanations focusing on patterns that help you build that huge mental web. And on top of that, it makes practice feel like a game. You've got your daily practice, you have your drills rush for time sessions, and we also have a rating system, streaks, and analytics so you can track your improvement over time. And we designed it to be incredibly simple. Just log in, add some packs, and it will generate personalized study sessions. No more complicated setup, and no more worrying if what you're doing is optimal. Simply log in and improve. The Practice Hub is live right now for Savant users. If you're already on the website, go ahead and check it out. And if you're not, you can find the details below and try it out for free. This has been Gleb. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.